from the production studios of Epic Financial Strategies here in Red Bank, New Jersey. We are Infinity X, giving a stage and microphone to human excellence each and every single Tuesday, 7 p.m. East Coast. Replay, WeAreInfinityX.com. We are Infinity X YouTube and the We Are Infinity X app. And ladies and gentlemen, we did it again. We just keep bringing value. Each and every single week, we're giving a stage and a microphone to an entrepreneur that you want to pay attention to. Somebody who's doing things differently, somebody who's doing things innovatively, right? So that you can walk away with key materials that you can apply immediately to your business. Oh, and by the way, financial literacy, marketing literacy, and all the good things. And ladies and gentlemen, um, for the past two weeks, and really for the past year, uh, I've been getting to know tonight's guest um, on, on a much deeper level. And I have been blown away by his knowledge in the marketing space, in the lead generation space, and, and quite frankly, in the entrepreneurial space, right? Because, you know, marketing companies, in my opinion, are a dime a dozen. But for you to be on, what is it? Uh, I think it was Inc. 5000 Global's, uh, it, it was it Inc. 5000's fastest growing companies is, it, you know, without a, without a doubt, you know, something that you want to pay attention to because that doesn't grow on trees. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by Mark Del Priori. Uh, Pri Mark Del Priori. <laughs> I know him so well, I don't get his uh, I don't get his name right. But Mark, what's going on, brother? How are you doing? How are you? Good. Doing really, really well. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mark is the CEO of Trademark Global. It's uh, tmgbl.com, and you can check him out on LinkedIn. Mark Del Priori. Mark, what's going on tonight, brother? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. It's, it's a blessing to be here. I'm happy to share some good information. Yeah, and, and, and listen, man, uh, the pleasure is absolutely mine. And I have just been, I've been shocked at everything that you know in terms of lead generation and all the things that come from a market, you know, how to effectively market uh, companies, whether they're yeah. startups or pre-existing companies that are, uh, that are doing good things that could level up to uh to great things you know yeah thank you i mean it comes from a genuine heart just really trying to help people see them persevere see them grow you know it makes me feel good to see companies actually coming uh and thriving with some of the information that we provide to them the type of leads we offer so it comes from a place of help and from just trying to just get there to get them to understand that you know you know there are lead gen companies out there but for the most part some companies are better than others right. and we, today we want to talk about a little bit about what's working some of the pitfalls to stay away from, some of the pros and cons that we've seen in the industry, uh, and see hopefully we can help some people. So. Yeah, and you know, Mark, I appreciate that. And you know, folks, again, replay we are infinityx.com. But tonight we want to go a little bit rapid fire. So if you have a question for Mark pertaining to marketing or lead generation for your business, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead into the chat, put the question up. We will hit that question during the session. Or, um, re again, replay weareinfinityx.com. You can DM me directly for a question with Mark and or a question for myself for something that you heard during the week. So, Mark, I always um, want to go through the journey of human excellence, right? You know, because we can't, I always say you can't know where you're going unless you know where you're at, right? You know? <laughs> and so, where did it all start for you? from heart and he started his journey back in 93 and then me seeing that him running a company how successful he was how much free time he had to yep. give back to the family yep. you know it inspired me to say wow it doesn't look like it's too much of a bad gig you know mm -hmm. but as a young kid didn't really know if that was going to be my path so um s partnered with him and grew a, a company with him that he owned a construction company and where was that that, that was here in uh, new that jersey was in new jersey okay yeah, in morris county okay up north. born born uh, and raised also oh yeah born and raised okay. in jersey yep in morris county east hanover uh born in uh you know belleville uh but you know essentially just kind of seeing it as a young kid and, and being around it and it inspired me to say hey i wonder if i could do that and eventually it ended up being what i started to do so yeah, it started with my father, so God rest his soul. But uh, oh, yeah. God rest his soul, may he rest in yeah, peace. I know I've lost mine as well. Of yeah, course, so brother, you're was, welcome. Uh, it was, it was uh, really special to see him go through that and basically made me the entrepreneur I am today. That's so. incredible. And did you go to college? I did. I went to Philly Dickinson University. Okay, okay. Uh, again, up north um, and played D1 soccer. So Whoa, hold yeah. on a second. Play D1 <laughs> soccer? I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, I played Fantastic. some D1. Uh, okay. Because FDU's D1, it was a good experience. Had a twin brother who I played with also. 
Uh, and um, how do you have a twin time? brother? I do. Identical? Yeah. Am I talking to him right now? No. Because <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing, by the way. That would have been like the ultimate, you know. That would Rob, been Rob is but Rob is married to a twin also. I don't know yeah, if you knew he that. Was telling but, yeah, telling me. Yeah. 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 Jan, shout out to Janice and Kelly. So yeah, but um, you know, college was great. Yep. You know, played some soccer. I uh, learned a lot along the way. Got a business management degree. Okay. Um, so learned about a little bit of every aspect of business, and then started to figure out that marketing was for me. So excellent. And so you started to figure out that marketing was for you in college. No, actually, in college, it was more about what am I going to do. Like a lot of people. Oh, geez, isn't that the truth? Yeah, oh back God. in the day, yeah. there wasn't so many. There wasn't so much access to the internet. You know, back in like the late '90s, so it was just starting to get popular. So there was no like, hey, let me go check out some influencers and find out what I like, what I don't like, what's available. There was no, there was no Facebook, there was no LinkedIn. There was like, no, what did there we do? No you know. Yeah. <laughs> so you really had to just learn from the peers around you and the people around you that you had had access to. So I didn't know because I didn't have enough access to enough people, and I guess I didn't realize that I should be going out to networking events and stuff like that. So. When you and when you graduated from when you, when you graduated from college, did you have yeah. any idea what you wanted to do when you grew up? No, <laughs> no. So I, like I said, my father had his construction company. That's right, right. So he's. I went through. I thought I wanted to go into banking. I thought I wanted to go to Wall Street. Um, and eventually, my father made me an offer six months out of college that I couldn't refuse. Right. And he was like, "Hey, why don't you come work in the construction company? I'll show you the ropes." And he was my first mentor. So I learned how to sell, I learned how to do accounting, I learned how to do marketing, you know, everything of an asset, all the facets of a business. Uh, and then eventually, you know, it didn't come till later mm. that I knew marketing was for me. I think as social media started to roll out and I started to see the popularity and I started to see how influential it is and, um, you know, a lot of things just kind of fell and into well, place. And what were some things that you keyed in on, right? Because I think influencers are different today than they were yeah. at the time that it was really, really starting to, to you know, kind of unveil itself to the world here a little bit. So, like, what right. were some things that caught your eye? Um, you know, back in the day, it was, like, early 2000s and then, like, middle 2000, like, 2008, 2009. You started to see Facebook roll out. Mm. And the first thing that caught my eye was, like, wow, Mark Zuckerberg, he's, like, 20 years old. And he's a billionaire. Like, how yep. is that possible? I'm, like, he's younger than me. I'm, like, he's already a billionaire. And back then, I had this old mentality. I'm sure we all do. Like, well, if you're older, you got to make more money because you're older, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, but seeing yep. this young kid come out of nowhere as a billionaire, one of the richest people in the world, it's crazy. The, uh, it I'll opened my eyes up to wow, there's a lot of money in marketing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, my heart and soul got into it about actually genuinely helping people, not just about the money, but if you help people, the money will follow. Yeah. This, I'll and tell you what, the Social Network together. is a hell of a movie. If you have it, if you if you folks have never seen the Social Network, you absolutely have to take a look at it because it. I don't even think it does the the journey justice, you know. But, no, it but is, it's it, a good it, entrepreneur it, movie. It sure is. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It, yeah. It absolutely is. Yeah. Hey, we got a question coming in from Travon. Shout out to Travon Gross. Craft your dream. Love you, brother. Um, I can't. I, you know, I can't quite see that. Can you make that out, Mark? Uh, let's see. So, how does the marketing change? Uh, how does the marketing change as, as business businesses scale? scale? Oh, great question. That is great, a great question. question. Why don't you hit them? Yeah, can you guys hear me okay still? You think we're good now on the mic? Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, so how does the marketing change as businesses scale? So, when you're looking at a business from a small business perspective, a lot of times you have a lot of time, but you don't have a lot of money. So, if you're mm. a business that's starting off, you have a lot of time, you have a lot of. Uh, you know, to figure out what I have to do. So doing research, figuring out what's gonna work for you, what you're comfortable with. As you get grown and you have, you have more clients, you have more money coming in, now you have more money and less time, right? So now you have to spend your money differently. So as far as specific things, it, it depends on each particular niche and what vertical like you're in. Yep. So if you're in insurance, you know, getting referrals and that type of basis is good to start because that's a free way. You got time to go out and network, shake hands with accountants, you know, and stuff like that. Yep. But if you're actually like someone who is in a different niche, maybe you don't want to be meeting with referrals. Maybe you want to get into the online processes. You want to start posting on social media and LinkedIn, you know, on different forms online. Uh, you want to learn from other entrepreneurs that are doing it in your space. I mean, they say it all the time, success leaves clues. Yeah. So if you're someone yeah. who's you know, a life insurance agent and you have your own entity and you want to grow, um, go look at other life insurance agents, see what they're doing and their success 
will leave clues and then they'll trail behind. So hearing them on podcasts like this, you know, seeing what they're doing or, or even just knocking on their door if you're young and just asking, hey, I see you got a lot of success. What are you doing? What, right. what could you advise? If you have a larger business that's growing, you're probably going to have a lot more money to spend. So if ah, you have more, there we go. If okay. you have more yeah, money yeah. to spend, now yeah. you're going to be doing paid Especially ads. Especially if they're overfunding insurance, by the way, because then they're going to borrow it out and reinvest back into the business. Hey, there you go. Drop I figured I'd put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to have more money when your business that's established. So then you're going to be able to find, like, maybe videographers that can video your content. They can edit it for you. They can put it on social media. And now you're spending more money and less time. Right. So it just depends on where you're at in your stage of business. And, and by the way, Trevon, I know that you're out there, brother. We're going to get real deep, by the way, into lead gen for businesses like yours, because I know what you're up to, brother. And honestly, lead gen for you would be absolutely magical. We're going to hit that in a few minutes. But what I wanted to do, I'm, I wanted to pivot back over to um, 2008. Right. So you yeah. see you see Zuckerberg, right? You see Facebook, but you start to see yeah. evolution, right? But you, did you model after Zuckerberg or did you model after somebody else as you kind of came to the aha moment that you wanted to launch your own business? Yeah, my aha moment actually was about 2012, 2013. Okay. I was actually working for an FMO. Oh, were you really? I, I was okay. recruiting agents to, okay. to write life insurance policies. Okay. So I started using LinkedIn a lot. That's my go-to to this day to bring on new clients. Uh, and then Facebook's for the B to C side, the consumer side. However, you know, when 2012 was my aha moment, I'm like, wow, if I can use LinkedIn to recruit insurance agents and I just have to send out some messages to people, like DM them and say, hey, are you interested? And eventually it came to a point where I started getting a lot of influx of people coming in yep. through my LinkedIn messages. And I was like, wow, this social media thing works. And then from there, I was like, Let, let's go. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like literally right, like right, sending right. out hundreds of messages a day now, when it was okay. LinkedIn now has rules and stuff. But yeah, but did you have to automate that? At, like, did you automate that right away? Because, I mean, like for somebody who's running a business and somebody who's just living, you know, living life, like yeah. doing, it, doing all of that yourself, right. you know, that's a major, I mean, time, back then, major I time consumption. Back, right? back, it does. It takes a lot of time. But you know what? You know, I, th I think – if you're gonna have anything worth having as far as the business goes, mm -hmm. first, you're gonna to have to put a lot of time in. Yep. And then eventually you get to a point where you can hire some people and teach them what you know so they can put the time in, right? Mm -hmm. And then you hire those people so they can be your backbone of your business, right. and now you're doing more of the closing deals instead of having to do everything. So for me, it was doing everything. Yep. It was a side hustle, it yep. was a bootstrap business, right? Nights and weekends it. while I'm working corporate in America. And then it turned into, okay, now I'm making a little bit of money. I can hire someone. So I actually hired someone in Africa to do some of the virtual assistant stuff. And they were sending out messages. And I was paying them inexpensive, but enough to feed their family. And we had a great deal. And then eventually I paid someone in, in, you know, in like Bangladesh, I think. And mm -hmm. it, was like, mm -hmm. it was just like I didn't have a lot of money because I was still bootstrapping. But I was thinking and watching videos like Tim Ferriss is great. If you, anyone's familiar with him you know, about the four hour work week. Oh great, yeah. Great book. Yep. Um, yep. So learning concepts from these people, you know, is really what just escalates you trying to figure it out on your own and being stubborn is an old school method and it'll get you nowhere. Replay so. folks. We are infinity X. We are infinity X.com. We're being joined this evening by, by Mark Del Priori. I, I, I have, for some reason, it just doesn't roll off my tongue, Mark. I don't know what That's it is. It's a long one that can roll off the Del tongue. Del Priori. <laughs> Del Priori. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I tell you, they yeah, said it right, Del. By the so way, shout good. out to Deneen. She's on here. Proud wife there. I love that. I hey, love that. Hey, Welcome aboard, Deneen. <laughs> Happy to have you here. Folks, replay, we are infinityx.com. We are infinityx YouTube. If you have a question for Mark, make sure that you put it out into the chat. So what we're talking about right now, folks, what we're talking about right now is we're talking about, by the way, Time stands for things I must earn, right? If you're gonna yeah, if you're gonna like build that. and scale a business, you, the sweat equity has to be there, yeah. you know, absolutely without in a doubt. In the beginning, you know, it's it's not gonna and then, yeah. And then you know, in the beginning, for me at least, and for most entrepreneurs, you know, it, they, some people make it look so easy. <laughs> it's like a gymnast yeah. going through the routine. Yeah. They do twenty million backflips. It looks so easy, yeah. but they you don't see all the hard work that goes into it behind the scenes. No, you don't. You know what I'm yeah. saying? When nobody's that's, looking. That's what are you doing when nobody's looking? Right? Yeah. 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 But you know what gratification you get when you actually get through those stretches, that blood, sweat, and tears, the, the lonely nights staying up late while your kids miss you because you're, you're, they're sleeping and you're still working, and, and then you finally break through yep. you know, because of all that hard work, and you're like, wow, I just got to that next level of entrepreneurship. You feel, you feel proud, and you feel like you're making it. And you know what? At the end of the day, 
It will happen for anybody. If you put the time in and you're researching stuff and you're not just kind of dilly-dallying through it, I'm telling you from experience myself, from a bootstrap business to the business I own today, one of the fastest growing companies in America, mm. it's possible. Mm. It really mm. is. So <clears throat> we're, we're now at the point, it's like 2012 going into the decade when social media really starts to yeah. really, really elevate, right? And you're starting to automate. Um, and what were you, uh, were you automating recruitment on LinkedIn? What was it specifically that you were, that you were like, what were you yeah. specifically So in the beginning it was, I was working for, uh, you know, an FMO, yeah. a life yeah. insurance organization that was recruiting agents. So yep. that was it. It was recruiting agents, recruiting agents, sending out messages. They were coming back in. A message would be, for example, hey, we're offering free, free leads, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you join us and you write your life insurance policies through our company, we'll give you free leads so you can close more deals with us. Sure. So the, the whole idea was we'll give them leads, maybe $100, $200 worth of leads. They'll help us make you know $5,000 and then we can take that money that from the policy that we make with them and then give them, give them back money in, in free leads, sure. if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. So yeah. send out messages, get free <coughs> leads if you work with us. And I was like, this is like, it was easy. I was recruiting like 10 to 12 agents a month. Well, because leads people. don't grow on trees, right? They so don't. somebody sees free leads and they're right, like, they, yeah, don't. they forget that they have to well, work the leads, you know? <laughs> into, yeah, which segued me is we eventually into why I started Trademark Global, the company I own today. Because yep. even though we were giving out free leads, the leads weren't that good. Mm. And eventually agents were like, well, I'm, I'm getting free leads and I signed up for you, but I'm not closing any deals. Right. You know, what's going on? And right. that's what I want to talk about. Like some leads are good, but not all leads are created equal. Right, some are back. Hundred percent. So, so, yeah. so you decide that you're going to leave the FMO, right? And left the and FMO, yep. moved out of state, went to Pennsylvania, you know, which was, you know, probably the only one in my family at the time that actually went across borders. I left my mother, my father, my whole family was still in Jersey. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of everybody who I was watching, but I had to make that move for me as an entrepreneur to get to where I felt like my my soul has a journey, and that's where I need to accomplish. And I have still the most utmost, utmost respect and love for all my family and and can't wait to see them during Christmas and stuff yeah, yeah. coming up. I can't believe that's already coming. I know. It's but, a, yeah, I know. It's knocking on the door. But, um, know. you know, it, it just really just, you know, <coughs> going through that, leaving the, um, the FMO, going to Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And then that was the first time I ever went into corporate America when I left New Jersey. So I went to go work for corporate America for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And then I just said, it's not for me. Yep. You know, the managers that, that I was, that were managing me didn't like me. And you know, I was very tough because I had that like spearheaded entrepreneur like <laughs> mindset. Yeah, they're not they're like not they, thrilled with that. I think right? the exact <laughs> words would yeah. be is you know don't invent the wheel, Mark. And don't like, reinvent the wheel. Oh yeah. my god. And I'm oh, like, but I'm an entrepreneur, god. and I didn't really like. This is like, the way that we've <laughs> always done it. Hey, folks, by the way, it doesn't work. FYI, you know the things. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes don't get me started. Sometimes you think you know better than what's there, right. and that, that was me. And I realized, okay, we're. we're not seeing eye to eye. Right. And I felt like there was more for me. So then after leaving Jersey, coming to PA, trying yep. corporate for two years, as I was in corporate, I was building this business. So, which became my full-time gig. Yep. So, so <coughs> tell me about the evolution of Trademark Global. Right, yeah. tell me, like, like uh, you know, it just like so, take, walk me through the journey. Of okay, that. so now I'm in corporate, yep. right? I'm talking about 2014, 2015. And you know, basically what I'm doing every day is working nine to five, nine to five in corporate. However, on my lunch break from 12 to one, uh, you saw this guy walking around the parking lot outside. That was me. <laughs> I had my cell phone on, hustling from 12 to one at lunchtime, closing deals on my side hustle. Wow. So I was a broker, what they call in the data game is a data broker, right? Somebody who's actually slinging data. So you'll go to a client and say, what do you need to buy? They'll say, listen, I need data of people who want to buy life insurance. Right. And I'll say, okay, well, I'll go find someone because I didn't have the data. I'll go find someone who had the life insurance data and then I would be the one in the middle and say, hey, buyer, I have the data for you. <laughs> and then I would, this, the, the company would sell it to me, let's just say for $500. Right. And then I would sell it to them for say $1,000. So I would make $500 profit. Okay. And that's how I started. And the more of those, I met people who sold life insurance leads. I met people who sold health insurance, et cetera. And then I just started growing a whole network of, of buyers that wanted stuff and people who were selling it. And then I was like the middle guy in the middle that was just reselling it. Unbelievable. So, and that's how it slowly grew. And it was a lot of conversations, nights and weekends. You know, I had an hour drive back and forth to my home for two years. So hour to, to work yep. for corporate America. Yep. I would make phone calls the morning in and on the hour wide ride back. I would actually make phone calls on the way back. And so um, your typical workday is, what, it's got to be 15, 16 hours. Right now? Yeah. 
Uh, it could be. Well, back then, I would imagine. Yeah, especially it was back, more than that. Especially yeah. back then, because, yeah. but yeah, now it's, it's, it could be as whatever I want it to be. The more I put in, the more I get out. Unless I can train people, which we're literally hiring now, to, to, to learn what I don't have the time to do, teach them to do it, so then you know, I'm coming in, so a, couple, I'm in a couple places uh, right. at, one, at one time. <laughs> so you, you can know? duplicate yourself. So yeah. um, we're going hit to hit, hit the questions in the chat here in just one second, guys. But so now introduce to, to our audience yeah. what Trademark Global is today. Yeah, so Trademark Global today is a performance lead generation company. And basically what that means is we do not charge you to um, pay us, let's just say $5,000 for marketing and hope to get leads. In other words, you could say, hey, Mark, here's $5,000. Go run Facebook ads and get us as many leads as you can. We do not do that. What we do is called pay per lead model, which means we actually run those ads for you for free. You don't have to pay us anything up front no setup costs or anything. You only pay us when you get a qualified lead that comes through. So basically, for example, you know, if we generate a lead for life insurance, you only pay us for that qualified lead, right? If you get 100 leads from us, let's just say you, pre you, you prepay for 100 leads, right? Um, 100 leads you will get, maybe 10 a day, 10 a day, 10 a day, until you reach 100. Okay. But we will fulfill the contract at 100. So. That's our model, essentially. We, we charge you per qualified lead. We don't charge you an agency model where you hope to get leads. We guarantee if you pay for 100 leads, you will get 100 leads. How are you one of the fastest growing companies in America? Like, uh, like, like, like <laughs> a lot of hard work. <laughs> a lot no. of hard work, but you know, everybody um, works hard. Like, you know, yeah, you have to have I, I can tell you, so I, I talked to my twin brother about this. Shout out to Lawrence if you're on right now. Um, so essentially, you know, what I've told my brother is, and I'll tell anybody who's watching today, if, if you're looking to be the fastest growing anything, go after the whales, right? Ooh. And what does that mean? Mm. And we were talking about this before, yep. right? The podcast. Mm -hmm. If you're, if, let's just say, if you're going after a comp, like uh, you're trying to sell, for example, I'll give you for us, for leads, we could go after a, a local insurance agent who wants to buy leads. And he may say, yeah, I want to buy 10 leads, 20 leads a month. So, okay, great. And we can focus all of our sales reps to go after those local agents, local agents, local agents. Or we can say, who is the biggest insurance company in the planet that is buying leads? And that's what we did. Mm. So we went after the whales. We didn't go after a thousand small guys. Were you prepared? We went after like 25, 50 big, big the giants. Were you prepared to fail? Yeah. You were? Yeah, yeah, because I mean, listen. I, yeah, and, you know, and honestly, we did yeah. right in the beginning. We're like, that. let's just get the clients in, all right? And you know, and we'll we'll get it going, figure it out. But we brought a lot of big clients in really early on, and this is something that I messed up on. But I'm an <laughs> entrepreneur, so I'm learning as I go sometimes, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, it's the get out of jail free so card. So I went after the big out, guys, right? like yeah, Liberty yeah. Mutual, got them at their corporate offices, like all their agents in the whole country as a contract, and then wow. all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah, and those are some of our clients. But you know, all of a sudden, we're sending them leads that weren't that qualified. Got it. And I was like, oh, crap. Like, I didn't realize that, like, some of my vendors could be sending me left stuff that's not so qualified. And the client was like, hey, strike one, trademark, strike two. Yep. And then after strike three, they're like, the, bye yeah, bye. that's it. Yep. And I, so I lost a couple contracts like that. And I was like, oh, crap, this is not good. So I got to clean this up. So we implemented over the last couple of years. Uh, qualifications and stuff like that to qualify the leads better. Incredible. So our clients won't complain as much. <laughs> Folks, we are Infinity X. We're joined this evening by the CEO of Trademark Global, uh, Mark Del Priori, and uh, you can get him at tmgbl.com or on LinkedIn at uh, Mark Del Priori. Um, we have a couple of questions that came into the chat. Shout out to Parker Gamble. Parker, welcome aboard, brother. Glad to have you here. Parker is a new client of mine, so you know Mark. Awesome. And um, you know he's doing some he's doing some really interesting direct marketing um, yeah. uh, activities right now, building out building out a business. Yeah. And his question is, what would you consider the best places to to research, such as Google trend searches? Or is there some other place? Is there some other places you would look uh, for for the best services to be advertising? Good question, Parker. Okay, so when I hear that best places to research, research you mean as far as getting more uh, the success leads clues types of research, like how to find out what you should Prob be doing. Probably so. If I understand what Parker's doing, Parker Parker is looking to source contracts for other uh, <coughs> blue collar workers. Yeah. Right. So like he wants you know. So it's probably in the Facebook ad space. Yeah, it could be. 
you know, but find out where your target market would, would hang out, right? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you're gonna have people hanging out a lot in print, like the older generation. Usually if they're older, they like to take a, a newsletter or a magazine or a book or a directory and flip through, right? If they're sitting in the doctor's office, like they'll pick it up and read it. Mm -hmm. So maybe doing print would be good for you, right? If you're looking, but I mean, sometimes people, you know, running Facebook ads, they, it sounds great and everything, but sometimes a lot of Facebook ads could be fraudulent ads, which Facebook won't tell people. So I get a little weary about Facebook. Like we run Facebook internally for a real estate uh, business that I have on the side. Mm -hmm. And I would say 50% of the leads, we can't even get in touch with them. And we ran them 100% ourselves. It's for my company, I'm losing money. So Facebook is like hit or miss, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I, I get worried about that unless you know exactly what we're doing and we're still learning the algorithms, algorithms of Facebook. So, but it works. And then the other 50%, you hope you can close them, right? So it's just tricky. But uh, as far as the blue collar, it, um, you know, it depends on the niche. What niche would it be, like specifically? Any niche for blue collar? Oh, it, it could be painters, it could be, it'd be contractors, contractors, like okay. general contracting type work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so usually you can find a lot of contractors, believe it or not, on the good old yellowpages.com. Mm. You know? Mm. So you could see if they're advertising, here's a really good tidbit of information. If somebody's advertising on yellowpages.com, like you type in painting contractor, mm -hmm. and then you see the first three selections are an ad, an ad, an ad, guess what? They're paying to get leads, right? So essentially that's someone who has a marketing budget, right? Right. So they, they have extra money to play around with. So then maybe someone that's, that's a little bit higher net worth client that has extra money floating around that maybe you can partner with them because you know, hey, maybe they have marketing budget, maybe they have a budget for something else too. Right. That right. makes, sense? makes perfect sense to me. And Parker, yeah. if you're out there, brother, if you're still there, direct uh, direct message me. I'll put you in touch with uh, I'll put you in touch with Mark. Maybe you can have a conversation Absolutely. with him. Happy to answer any yeah. questions. I love doing that. <coughs> Replay we are infinityx.com. We are infinityx YouTube and on the We Are Infinity X app, Spotify, Apple, iTunes, and all of the different podcast models. Uh, Parker, thank you very, very much for the question. Tatiana Torres, thank you so much for the question. Uh, but we can generate our own leads. I thought that I thought that was the purpose of the seminar. Am I confused? Um, well, let's talk about her own lead generation then for a, uh, for a moment. So if if I'm essentially starting from scratch right now, yeah. right, and I you know like because you know again. I'm going to have to create a marketing budget for myself, right? Yeah. And I'm going to have to, you know, I'm certainly going to have to spend money to make money, right? Yeah. But if you were starting a online business today, right? And regardless of what, the, what type of business that it was, yeah. what would be your tactic and strategy for lead gen? More of like an e-commerce, you yeah. mean? So, I mean, e-commerce to me is something I want to crack that code on. I'm not the specialist in it, but I'm going to tell you what I see from other professionals and what inspires me to want to do it myself. What I'm seeing on e-commerce is something I was talking to Dave about too, is you know, if you're just doing posts, videos is, is king right now. They used to say content is king, but right now video is king on social media. It's becoming everywhere between the TikToks and the Instagram reels and you know, Facebook, you're seeing video everywhere through the feeds. So when you have a video of the type of product you want on e-commerce yep. to maybe sell, yep. right? Um, you know, obviously putting the link in there, putting the hashtags in there, all that stuff is good and it does help. But at the same time, you do want to grow your relationships with other influencers, and you do want to bring value to people. Don't just push your product. Don't just push your service. Bring actual value too. So you can have half your post be video posts that are talking about a product that they're trying to push if you're on social media, but the other half can be about you know whatever you think your audience is going to want to hear, whatever you feel like you can make content about like that. that doesn't, you don't have to hesitate. You can make it. That's going to bring value to them. So they have a reason to come to follow you, and then once in a while they'll like the products that you're offering from the e-commerce perspective too. But you have to give them a reason to lure them in. If you're just trying to push your product or service on them, you know, people are gonna be turned off from that because they're getting too much of that already. So you gotta have two separate sides of the spectrum. Once post here with video that's talking about just bringing value and how you can help your audience, who, whatever kind of audience you're trying to grow, and then one about the product and service. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, uh, <coughs> let's see here. No other questions in the chat right now. So okay, so I have a question. I, I have a question for you. A, a, as you as you look at the next evolution of lead generation, right, um, or the next, you know, what the next decade holds in lead gen and lead generation, what do you see changing, right, that people are doing right now that they should not be focusing upon and doubling down on new marketing efforts? 
So yeah, so I talked to a lot of professionals about this. So text posts, whether it's on LinkedIn, mm. Facebook, it's going away. But just text in general, you know, like in other words, putting like, hi, we offer this, and, 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 and just the image yep. is no longer, it's gonna be obsolete. All these platforms, even the Facebooks of the world and the Instagrams, they're all switching over to video. So if you're doing stuff that's just a, a picture and just text, you gotta start finding videographers or you gotta start finding someone who can make a 30 second video, like explainer videos are really good, you know, stuff like that. Because people will watch a video. Sometimes they won't even have the sound on on their feed, right? Mm. They'll just watch the video. But video is king. Especially if they have subtitles too. Subtitles yeah, is subtitles key. Is yeah, absolutely, awesome 100%. Because it's, sometimes it's yep. late at night and maybe they're sleeping in bed and their spouse is sleeping and they don't want to wake them up. So they'll watch the subtitles and, and they're not that the video on, but they can actually see it. It'll it'll in, it'll in heighten them to to be engaged. If they're just trying to read through, sometimes nowadays as we have so much content being thrown in our faces, we don't want to sit there and read a post anymore. Right. We don't. No, no, it's true. The younger generations, yeah. we just want to see a video, quick and short. If we like it, we'll <coughs> click the link to go learn more. Yeah, about. they say that the attention span right now is like 13 seconds or something yeah. like that. That's typically why, why reels or stories work really, Absolutely. really well also right now. Yeah, usually the first 10, 15 seconds of a video is key too. If you have something that grabs their attention, which a lot of people hear, they'll stay on for the video more. If they really like it and watch the whole video, then they'll click on the link and go to your, your, your landing page. Folks, we are InfinityX. We are InfinityX.com. We are InfinityX YouTube, where you can find the replay. If you have a question for Mark, please put it into the chat. So, Mark, you are heavily, heavily engaged in continuing to expand uh, Trademark um, through LinkedIn, right? Yeah. I think, you know, listen, listen. <laughs> I think that people of influence or people who are aspiring to, to build out influence yeah. um, are focusing in Instagram, right? They're focusing in YouTube. They're f even focusing in Facebook. Um, uh, or I say even because I don't even think that that's like the platform. TikTok as well. But you know what? LinkedIn is so underrated. Right, you know, yeah. and but I think that people are intimidated to think about aggressively marketing and posting in LinkedIn because of the saturation of it. Right, so how well, do you well, weed through the yeah, saturation? Yeah, so you got to weed through who your ideal client is. Let's Where, talk about that. Yeah, yeah, so who's your ideal client? Who's your ideal prospect that you want to sell to? Where are they hanging out? Mm -hmm. Right, I always think about this with me. For me, we're looking for. Uh, CMOs, chief marketing officers most of the time, mm, okay. they're hanging out on LinkedIn. So we tackle LinkedIn hard to get in front of these CMOs and get them to respond to our messages. But if you're an e-commerce store, right, you're, you're, you're gonna have, I mean, humans are humans, right? Yep. But they may not have that um, shopping mindset on when they're on LinkedIn. They may be in business mode. So trying to promote to someone only on LinkedIn if you're an e-commerce store is probably not the best way so to go. So you're talking about intentionality here. It's all about attention. It's funny because sometimes when you get a different feel. When you're on TikTok, you're in a giddy mood. You're funny. You want to laugh. You want to sit back and just and, and just loose. You don't want to think. Sometimes you want stupid videos coming through. And then sometimes <laughs> yeah. sometimes yeah. you'll you'll want to learn. Sometimes yep. you'll you'll want to watch educational videos. So there's a, there's a good place for e-commerce. People love seeing new products on TikTok. It's really, really advantageous. If you could display the product yeah. on TikTok in a 30 second video, buy the product, bring it home, display it uh, in a 30 second video, you using it, and then put your, your affiliate link in the comments and, or, or, or in your profile and say, go to my profile to get this product. You know, you, a lot more people will buy a product on TikTok than they will on LinkedIn. Yeah, but you know you what? Know? I feel like so many people post and pray on TikTok. I feel like so many people post and pray on Instagram, right? So, like, <clears throat> if I'm gonna market on TikTok, let's 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 stay with TikTok for a second. If I'm gonna market in TikTok, how am I going to get a a, a video that's gonna catch somebody's attention? Right, you know, because I mean, you know, yeah. again, saturation is everywhere, right? Yeah. So, what's so special about your video? Like, what what would you do, or what would be your approach? So, yeah. so there's someone by the name of Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm not sure if you're familiar sure. with him, New Jersey native. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. Hockey. But what he says is, don't worry about the other people. Don't worry about who you're trying to impress. What do you care about? What do you? Ins what inspires you? Do you love to sell hair bows? Do you love to sell Minnie Mouse ears? No pun intended to my wife. I love you. <laughs> um, you know, do you love to sell you know clothes for babies? Like, what do you love? And create content around what you love because that will help you inspire you to c show up every day to create the content, to create the videos, and people will see your love for what you love, 
and that'll bring more people to you. Like for example, my li- my wife loves Disney World. Anything Disney, she loves. Yep. If she would, she create a TikTok channel, everything Disney, and started promoting stuff, and started putting hashtags: Disney World, Disney Lover, Disney Mom. You will eventually be known as the Disney Lover, right? And more people will start to come to your page to find Disney stuff. If you're the person who loves to sell jeans and you have you have these certain jeans that you could create yourself and bedazzle them people will come to your page to always see what kind of new jeans you have don't worry about what people love don't worry about what they think what do you love so what you're if i'm hearing you then what you're saying is that people get so concerned about whether or not somebody is going to stop on my video right? right that you know that maybe they overthink it or maybe they it prevents them from actually going on to TikTok and posting the videos and everything like that so oh right. oh, oh, oh all right, so let me ask you another question so you love Trademark Global, right? You yeah. love what you do. If you were going to launch, and, and I don't know if Trademark Global is specifically a, uh, a good avatar for something like TikTok, but if you were going to approach TikTok in advertising your company, yeah. right? How would you, what would be your approach? What would be your angle for building out the videos? What would, you, what would be your hashtags or your keywords or anything like that that would get yeah, people? So you the know? approach, number one, is bring value. You know, are you, it's all about... How do you help people get what they want? Mm-hmm. That's what bring value means. How do you help people get what they want? Because guess what? If you help them get what they want, then they're going to help you get what you want. Mm. Right? So it's about giving. When you give and you give and you give, you will get. It's, it's proven fact. Okay. Okay? Yep. So it's scientifically proven, I think, with metaphysicists or something like that. <laughs> like the more yeah. you give in, in true giving without expecting anything in return, you will get. What would so, be, yeah. so for tra- trademark, like I would just give value, like explaining to people what is lead generation, you know, what what pitfalls again, like what to stay away from, like what I wouldn't do if I was you buying leads, what I would do if I was you if I was buying leads. Not we sell this and we're the best at that and mm. you're gonna love what we do. You better call us today. No, it's how can I bring value to you to help you live your life and make money or whatever you want, be happy or whatever you want to do. Love that. I love that. So let's play in that space a little bit more, right? Yeah. Let's let's peel the onion on lead generation now a little bit more. What what are some things that people should not be doing? When it you, you, like you, you just mentioned, okay, yeah. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out, well, I'm gonna that, put out the videos. Yeah, yeah, just what I was alluding to before. I mean, you don't want to say if I'm a lead generation company, the, the last thing I want to do is make a video on TikTok that says we're a lead generation company, we're the best in the country, we won the fastest growing company in America. You need to call us today because we're gonna help your business skyrocket 200 percent. Right. People are gonna be like, flip next video. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You don't want to yeah. do that. You don't want to pitch people on who you are, what you do, blah blah blah. Even when you get them on the phone and, and they're actually interested in your services, you still don't want to do that. Because you don't want to sell people in the beginning. You want to help them. Mm. And if you can find out what they really are trying to get out of you or your business or your advice or whatever, then you can, so in other words, if someone t- comes to me and says, I want to buy leads. Okay, well, let's talk about that for a little bit. That's what I'll say. W- what kind of leads do you want to buy? And I turn into like a doctor. <laughs> and I start, I start, I start yeah. diagnosing <laughs> yeah. what, what, what their issue is. Tell me your yeah. pain points. What issues are you having with your company? Why do you want to buy leads? So it's that whole process of like finding out, do I have a solution for what their pain points are or not? Right? So if that kind of answers your question. It, it, no, it, it absolutely does. I mean, but the, that it leads to 50 different more questions, you know? I mean, but let's, let's move away from, because you're not actively marketing with TikTok, right? But, but uh, you know... <clears throat> Even with the, you know, even with the passion, right? Even with the yeah. lead with value, you still in that world have to. I mean, is it just consistency of posts, or are, are is is it you know hashtags, or is you it like? You know what? I mean, to go viral, you're saying? Yeah. Is that, is not, not even necessarily to, to go viral, but I mean, just to grow. Sometimes it's yeah. first to first to the party wins. Sometimes mm-hmm. is what it is. I mean, I remember when I first got on TikTok back in uh, like the COVID days, right, mm-hmm. 2020. And it blew up in America, and I was like, "What is this?" And I, I, I would see people who would make a video of them chopping up onions and peppers, and for some reason they they got a thousand views. I'm like, onions and peppers getting chopped up gets a thousand views because they were early to the platform. Sure. And the algorithm yeah. was just taking anything and just trying to get people to watch videos. Is there an algorithm? Now, we're, now it's like it's it graduated. It's still early to mm-hmm. TikTok. It's still early, and it's got a ways to go. But TikTok and LinkedIn are the best places to still. I was just about to ask you about that. Yeah. Is there an is there an algorithm for LinkedIn? 
Yeah, TikTok and LinkedIn are the best places for reach right now. But again, you wouldn't go to LinkedIn so much if you're not trying to market to business professionals because usually people are on LinkedIn for business-minded stuff, not so much buying products online, right? So, yeah, so I, uh, that's where I hear other professionals say. Now, so if, that's, if that's the case, then do you spend and concentrate the majority of your marketing efforts on LinkedIn? We, um, for bringing on new clients? For bringing on new clients. Yes. Okay. And then we transfer it over to email. So we, we get them interested on LinkedIn, then we, we get into an email conversation with them, and then if we vet them out, and if they're good, we put them on a com in, a, in a meeting. So let's talk about LinkedIn for a moment, because every single day and you get the exact same thing and everybody on this podcast right now gets the exact same thing if you're on linkedin is you get a message every day yeah. hi david j harder infinity x a visionary my name is so and so will you marry me right they tell you the <laughs> entire life story in hopes that i'm going to set up an appointment with them and right. honestly it's an immediate delete right? Right, right so how do you you know like what what type of strategy you know like that's the wrong thing to do, in my opinion, yeah. right? What's the right thing to do there? Like, if you want to create additional lead gen there. So, you know, there's, there's different types of, of LinkedIn messages you could send out. One is like guerrilla, what I call guerrilla marketing, where you just blast out a bunch on an automated software and hope that you get responses. Mm -hmm. And there's other ones that are very tailored, crafted messages that are really targeted towards the right person with the right message at the right time, mm. right, of day, the right time of day. Yep. And if you can have hit the right person with the right messages at the right time of day, you have a, you have a chance. So that's that's the, that's the fact. That's what we do, and we're crushing. That's how we got LinkedIn. Is how we got to one of the fastest growing companies that's in America. Uh, uh, folks, we are Infinity X, joined by Mark Del Priori. He is the CEO of Trademark Global, and he is just dropping golden nugget after golden nugget after golden nugget. So let's 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 play in that space a little bit more. What are the analytics that go into the right times of the day to be market? Like, do, like, t t tell us a little bit more about. Yeah, like, go so, deeper on that because yeah, that's so really good. Usually, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays for email campaigns. What? And Re for messages like direct mail messages. Okay. Are usually the times of the week and the days of the week, and usually between like twelve and five, depending if you're Eastern and Pacific that you want to be messaging people and getting in front of them. Why? Because Monday you show up to the office, oh man, I just got out of the weekend, I'm so busy, I gotta catch up. So you're not really looking to go on social media too much because Monday is a very busy catch up day from the weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Emails came in from Friday night, Saturday. Tuesday, you caught up. Now you're like, okay, I got, two, I got a little bit of a little time. You know, 12 o'clock rolls around, lunchtime, I finish eating my lunch at my desk, I'm gonna go on LinkedIn for a little bit, for, play around. Yeah. Then they get your message, like, oh, who is this? Why'd they message me? They see it. Right? So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, usually. Fridays are a day where people show up to the office or they half day. They come in half day, oh, I gotta go mm -hmm. run, you know, I, I got a doctor's appointment. So usually people set up, they want a long weekend, so they'll do a half day on a Friday, especially if it's a small business that you work and you try to get a half day so you can have a, a longer weekend. So Fridays is not that good because people usually running around doing errands or they have a half day at work, so they're not behind the computer. Those are the, and every platform. And there are statistics and that actually back this up as well, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Just Google it. Yeah, just do the research Ooh. on. You know, if you put in the right keywords into Google, you'll be surprised at what you find. So it's that, about the right keywords nowadays in Google. One hundred percent. So that leads. So that that leads into the next platform, right? Because you know, let's let's talk about Google marketing, right? Yeah. And Google ads and stuff like that. Do or don't, and why? Yeah, Google is, is the, eight, the you know the. What do they call it? Eight hundred pound gorilla. In the <laughs> the eight hundred pound gorilla in the room. I mean, Absolutely. It's um, it, it'll always be king, but the problem is, is not everybody's flooding towards it. So sometimes it's very expensive to generate leads on Google. Like if you want to buy ads on Google, it's very expensive, right? Mm. And if you're in a specific niche, like we are in Medicare and we're in like auto insurance, these big carriers, like the billion dollar companies, are are spending like tens of millions of dollars a month to run ads on Google. It increases how much it costs per click. So I, we have to charge our clients a lot more because everyone's right bidding and the click prices are going up. So Google's tricky. Do they have the highest quality leads when done right? Absolutely. Because usually, what is Google? People are coming to, to Google. Google. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas if you get yep. an email, someone's going to you. Yep. So you're getting an email. You like, yeah, maybe I'll respond, maybe I won't. But if you go on to Google, you're actively looking. That's a hot lead. Mm. Yeah. And speaking of hot leads also, um, <coughs> How do you, from, because, uh, uh, I mean, listen, uh, uh, hot, the, the definition of hot lead for me personally has changed. So many changed. different variations. Oh, my God. It's, it's <laughs> unbelievable. You know, like, but to oh, me, yeah. I feel like it's somebody who's getting on the phone with me that is conditioned 
yeah. to want to have a conversation with me, right? right? So yeah. peel that on In my world of leads, it's, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, we live in a paper lead model. So there's, there's fraud, there's unqualified leads, um, there's more bad than good, I'd like to say, nowadays, unfortunately, because there's a big money maker in the affiliate world and lead gen world, but some people are, are purposely doing it wrong, some people are trying their best to do it right, like we do, and some people are really doing it right and they're crushing it, right? Yep. And those are the good, the bad, and the ugly. Question that came in the chat, by the way, Let's from go. Odette. I love it. What's up, Odette? Thank you so much for joining Infinity X. Do you help people like us calling existing businesses, business owners who are thinking about selling their businesses? Ooh, interesting. Very cool. Yeah, so uh, selling businesses, you know, is not something that we help with. We do recommend to go to a business broker mm -hmm. uh, is someone who could give you advice and I would just kind of pick their brain without actually paying anything. Mm. Maybe the first consultation is free. So I have a series of questions you want to get answered and see you know, if you can get a lot of gold nuggets. I mean, my brother asked me a lot of questions a lot of time, him and I bounce things off of each other, and I learn from him, he learns from me, and I'm like, listen, if I don't know, I say, this is what I would do to find it. Well, let's and go. Basically, I would go to YouTube and find what business brokers are talking about, the pros, the pros and cons, right? Because people are giving away free content, you just gotta find it. Mm. The pros and cons of what business brokers are saying about how to sell a business, what questions, uh, to ask what to avoid, what, you know, uh, to, well, let so me ask you, let, let's, let's put this into reality here for a moment. So yeah, Mark, you're now the ripe old age of, you know, 21 or however old you are. <laughs> and I'm just kidding around, but you know, let's say that you're at the point where you're ready to move into the next step of your journey. Right. Yeah. And, um, you're going to sell trademark global. Right. Right. You're going to be on the receiving end of calls from people like Odette. Okay. Yeah. What is going to entice you, right? And now think about, like, think about the intrinsic value of your company, right? right. Think about, you know, if you were to step away from your company, how, you know, how, would that company fail because you're the face of the franchise? Would you, you know, would you have to have, you know, a consulting arrangement for an extended period of time, leverage yeah. buyout, something like that? Right. What would make you, as an owner of a company, take their call as or, or key in on that individual versus That's other individuals. looking to buy me? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So this, yeah. usually you want, to, you want to get, this is what they usually say when you're buying and selling businesses. Mm. It's either they're going to give you a price that they want to pay and you say, maybe I'll take that price but on my terms or you could say, you know, I'll give you a price that I'll sell for and I'll do it on your terms. So if that makes sense, it sinks in a little bit. But basically, the terms are, you know, it could be put out in a billion ways in a contract. But basically, what I'm trying to say is, from someone looking to buy us, I'm looking to find someone that is going to give me good terms and a good price or fair, mm. right? Um, also, a high multiple is what is what you need, right? If I'm a small business owner and I just have me and one other employee. You know, when someone comes to buy trademark, they're going to say, you only have two employees. Hmm. So unfortunately, we can't give you a multiple of eight or nine because, you know, we have to actually, when you when you sell it to us, you're going to go away. Now I got to find someone to run. Sure. It. So yeah. you can't get that much. But they'll say if you got five or six employees and they're all running the company without you, instead of you, us saying we're going to give you a three multiple, we'll give you an eight multiple. So th that essentially means is they'll pay you, you know, almost three times what the company was worth because if you sell it as the owner, it still runs by itself and still makes all the money without you. So <coughs> in a different in a, in a different light here for a moment, right? The yeah. baby boomer population is yeah. retiring at a clip of 10,000 a day yeah. every day yeah. and they're right still going to be doing that for the next 10 years. I would make the argument that that is a generation that for the most part <coughs> is probably one of the larger segments of business owner population in the United States, even though that's kind of shifting now, right? Because people are becoming much more entrepreneurial. Well, right? yeah. But you know, what I have found though is that they don't necessarily know how to value their business, right? right. And or they're not necessarily thinking about the transition of of the business, right? So, yeah. it, you know, if you were going to if if you were going to create a lead generation campaign to go 
and market towards uh, you know business owners that wanted to you know potentially exit their business or even haven't even thought about that. There's actually websites online. I see where you're going with this to yeah. help promote them to sell their business. Yeah, yeah. And to get leads of people in who want to buy it, you can actually go on to like bizbuysell.com, hmm. and if you start googling sell my business, a bunch of websites will come up, and you can list them for free. Sometimes a little bit of money, and say and then before if you don't know what information to put in there then maybe you can call a business broker or you can learn from business brokers on YouTube how to evaluate a business and then you can evaluate it based on the calculations they give you and it could be that easy. And then you can list it for free yourself um, and then from there you could get an attorney, right, to help you to uh, go through the paperwork of what's needed to actually transfer the, the ownership. We are InfinityX.com. We are InfinityX YouTube. Replay, we are InfinityX.com. We are InfinityX YouTube. And on the We Are InfinityX app. And folks, it's been just an absolute treat to have Mark Del Priori, the CEO of Trademark Capital, on the Infinity X stage tonight. And, um, you know, we got about, listen, we got about nine minutes left here, Mark, right? So let's, um, folks, uh, you're, Odette, by the way, you're very, very welcome. Keep coming back. We keep bringing value. Look forward to being a resource any way that we can. But we got nine minutes, okay? Yeah. Folks, if you got a question for the, the <laughs> I'm going to say one of the one of the masters of lead generation that I and and you're too kind. You know, I'm just a true entrepreneur, good man, businessman, friend, uh, and somebody that I see in my future for not only my business but um, what we're doing over here at Epic as well. Um, but <clears throat> if you have a question for uh, for Mark, you got to put it in the chat right now. We will get to that. But we got nine minutes left. Let's go rapid fire, right? Give the audience what you want them to hear about marketing, about lead generation, and or business uh, you know, business in yeah. general. So a gold nugget that I have is, you know, if you're looking to get more leads for any type of business, usually I'm talking about e-commerce is a little bit different, mm. right? So yep. it's a little tricky for me because I'm not an expert in that, but I'm, I can figure out pretty much everything else. If you're a contractor, if you're looking, you know, to get um, more people to write life insurance policies, you know, et cetera, a good thing is, is to figure out who's your ideal client, right? And if you find out who that is, you write that down. Your ideal client is someone who makes 50000 to 150000 a year. My ideal client is someone who makes 200000 whatever. Write down their income. Write down what they look, what, what type of, uh, you know, do they have kids, you know? Because usually people who have kids usually want life insurance, at mm. the very least term, to cover themselves for their kids, yeah, right? Sure. It's becoming more popular. So write down who your ideal client is. That's number one, your prospect. Who do you want to market to, right? Next, where do you find those people, right? Do you find them on LinkedIn? Do you find them on Facebook? Do you find them, you know, are they going to be on insurance forms? Because believe it or not, there's forms online specifically for insurance. Mm. And there's going to be life insurance agents and agents on there, but there's going to be also consumers looking through those forms, seeing what the agents are talking about to learn and to maybe contact somebody. So going into those forums and writing some information in there to generate your own leads of people looking for life insurance may help. Uh, so finding out who your ideal client is, and then where to market to them, right? Insurance forms or whatever you're offering, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, and then offering value, right, is the next best thing. But not just value in, you know, like I said, a, a picture and content, but a video. A video now speaks volumes. It doesn't have to be a video of yourself. It doesn't have to be a video of anybody else talking like we see a lot of nowadays. It could be a video that someone made for you, a 15 second video or like a 30 second video that, exp that it just brings value um, to the client that says, are you having issues with this? Or you maybe you want to think about that and that. Contact us for more details. You know, not like we're the best at this and throwing your company in their face. So it, there is a process to it. And if you figure out that process, who you're targeting, you know, where are you going to target them? What are you going to say to them, right? That's part of the science to it. And then it just keeps rinsing and repeating. Let's talk about um, replication for a moment, right? Yeah. And duplication. You, right. you know, yeah. I'm <coughs> you, you're a business owner. I'm sure that the thought has crossed your mind about how I might be able to replicate myself so I might be able to focus on other things, right? And yeah. I think the entrepreneur is constantly thinking about that as well, right? Um, so... You know, when, when, when you're looking at specific um, items inside of a business, right? It doesn't have to be yeah. yours, but you can talk about trademark, but, you know, or inside of a business. What are, what are things that, you're look, that, that a business owner ought to be looking at to replicate or, and or duplicate so that you 
can free up your time to go look at other, you know, expansionary items? Yeah, so, you know, usually you always need new clients, right? You need new money coming in. At the end of the day, we all own a business to make more money. Yeah. But if you put the money first, then you're doing it wrong. You got to put, let me help people, bring value to them, and the money will come second. Right, and that's how it is. Don't chase the money because the money will keep running, right? Mm. But essentially, for me, you got to realize if you're an entrepreneur, no one's going to run your business like you can run it. They're gonna, if you're 100% all time as an entrepreneur, you're always showing up to the table because it's your business, it's your baby, mm -hmm. right? You could, you, if you could bring on someone that's 75% of you, you're doing really good. How do you find somebody who's 75% of you? Well, sometimes you'll probably find most of the time, I should say, you'll find people about 50% of you, maybe even 40%. And you got to train and, and enlighten and educate on how to get up to speed of what you expect from them based on basically what you've done your whole life or what you're doing. Yeah. And teach them, hey, this is how I did it. If you do these couple steps every day, these critical drivers, you do these KPIs every day, it'll help you to uh, do your job properly and to keep track of your performance. Yeah, and, and just based off what we were just talking about before, don't you think it's it's really, really important to start looking at your replacement and or people that you... I think everybody needs a number two. Yeah. yeah everybody needs a number two. Someone that's got their back, someone who knows how to speak their language, someone who could represent the company just as good as they do. Sometimes it's better than they can, right? Well, it's not only about running the business right now, but, but also um, it's about you know the future exit. Of the business, you know. Yeah. Shout out to Michael Smikin, by the way. Michael Smikin and Fred Pinto of Calgary Law. They run Fit to Exit, which is, uh, you know, essentially like guerrilla, you know, uh, guerrilla marketing towards uh, business owners that yeah. uh, have no idea how to exit out of their business, right? But, um, <coughs> you know, I, th you do have to think selfishly about what the monetary, because your business is your annuity, right? You know, when you know when you. When, when you retire, if you've been so, if you've been putting all of your money, all of your resources into your business or businesses, right. and you can't liquidate those at you know at, at, at you know at retirement age, yep. right, or whenever that actually that, that, that is, um, what what's the point? <laughs> yeah. you know you know it's what I mean. It's true. Yeah, you won't get a higher value on your business if you're running it, and then if you walk away, it's not going to run without you. Right. You got to put people in place so when you walk away from your business, it's running without you. You'll get a higher payout for it. Where are you going next? Like, what's what's the long term vision? Because I mean, like, I see you in my future, brother. Trust me, we got a lot of things going yeah, on. So, but, you know, yeah. I mean, in my future, I want to continue to help and, and teach people what I've learned, right? And how to inspire them that they could do it themselves. How to, you know, make sure that you know that it does take a lot of work. But if you work smart and hard, you get there a lot quicker. Mm. How do you work smart? Learn from people who've done it. You know, like I said, I keep saying it over and over, but success leaves clues. Learn from people who've been there, done it, and find out what they've done to, to, to do it. You can watch on YouTube, you can watch stuff like that, and then ask a lot of questions. Get yourself out there, go to networking events, go to that around your niche, you know, go to talk to other professionals, just call people up. I mean, you would think it's, it's like, oh, I don't wanna do that, I'm too shy, but well, do you wanna make a difference in your life, in your right. family's life? Does one phone call really, cause that could change your life, you know? So, but for me in the future, you know, I wanna have, you know, uh, a, a, you know, more of a presence online, but I don't really have a big influential presence, so I want to get more of a presence online. I want to be doing more podcasts and speaking the truth about how we c I can help people and direct them the right way, you know, so, um, and then wherever that goes, that goes, you know, but I kind of have a vision for it, and, you know, I'm just going to let it play out. I mean, one day at a time, right? So <laughs> I love it. Success leaves clues. Mark, it has been such a pleasure Thank to you. have Thank you, you on here me. this evening, brother. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this has been Mark Del Priori. He is the CEO of Trademark Global, helping the entrepreneur, helping the business owner create better systems and processes for lead generation. You want to pay attention to what Mark is up to. You can get him at tmgbl.com. That is Trademark Global's website. You can also get him on LinkedIn at Mark Del Priori. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I have to tell you, it just keeps happening with Infinity X. We keep expanding. We keep looking for ways that we can provide interesting content and value, right? That's what we want to, that, that's, that, that's the whole premise behind this is to provide that value. If there are other areas that you want to hear more about Mark or you know other key areas that you want to hear from, we have proximity. Send me a direct message. I'd be happy to explore influencers in a community that you want to hear about that I can put onto the Infinity X stage. 
Mark, any last uh, any last words for our, our audience tonight? No, I think, um, you know, I had a great time. Thank you for having me. I think there's a lot more to come. Uh, if anyone wants to have a conversation with me, check me out on LinkedIn, Mark Del Priori. It's Mark with a C, not Mark with a K. Uh, but I'm happy to, again, answer questions and see if I can help in any way. So. So ladies and gentlemen, replay, we are infinityx.com, we are infinityx YouTube, and on the We Are Infinity X app. And again, thank you very, very much for spending some time with us this evening. It's always an honor and a privilege to share a stage and a microphone with human excellence and somebody like Mark. And um, ladies and gentlemen, from my heart um, to, to all of you, I value you. Thank you for continuing to rock with me every single Tuesday. And we will see you next week, 7 p.m. East Coast, for another episode of Infinity X.